Evet YouTube'dan e, yayına da başladım. Size şimdi e, YouTube'daki adresi de göndereyim. Arkadaşlarınızla paylaşırsınız. Evet, YouTube adresimiz bu. <gülüyor> Bağlanamayan arkadaşlarınız varsa veya siz <gülüyor> bağlanmakta problem çekerseniz buradan, problem yaşarsanız buradan bağlanabilirsiniz. Ee, şimdi bugün e, ökaryotlara geçiyoruz. Geçen hafta e, virüsleri gördük, prokaryotları gördük. E, bu hafta ökaryotları görmeye başlayacağız. Önce e, protista, kingdom protista. E, arkasından e, fungi ve Plants, e, bitkiler ve e, mantarlar. Mantarlar ve bitkiler. Bunları e, bugün göreceğiz. Önümüzdeki haftada hayvanları göreceğiz. E, hayvanlar biraz daha ayrıntılı olacak. E, diğer kingdomlar daha biraz daha yüzeysel e, geçeceğiz. E, şimdi YouTube'u da tekrar kontrol ediyorum. Sanırım problem yok YouTube'da. Evet, alright. E, today we are going to talk about the origin and evolution of eukaryotes. And we will start with... Uh, protista. This is an example for uh, protists. Another example. So uh, there is a lot of variety. There is a huge variety in Kingdom Protista. If you remember, in the new system, three domain and six kingdom system, Protista is the first kingdom of uh, domain Ocaria, the uh, most incomplicated. Uh, group in the eukaryotes. Uh, most eukaryotes are single-celled organisms, so uh, unicellular organisms, in other words. They consist of only one cell. These eukaryotes are called, <coughs> are grouped in Kingdom Protista. Protist is the informal name of a group of mostly unicellular eukaryotes, but this is a, an informal name. Protists are eukaryotes, that's one Eukaryotic cells have organelles. Then prote all protists, even though they are single cell organisms, have uh, all uh, protists have organelles. Eukaryotic cells are more complex than prokaryotic cell. Remember, last week uh, we looked at the structure of prokaryotic cell. Uh, it's important to bear in mind that the organisms in most eukaryotic lineages are pro protists. Most protists are unicellular. They are also multicellular, kind of multicellular, not exactly multicellular, but uh, protists living in uh, colonies. Structural and functional diversity, like I said, is huge in uh, protists. Protists exhibit more structural and functional diversity than any other group of eukaryotes. So, The largest diversity is seen in Kingdom Protista. Through most protists, even though uh, sorry, even though most protists are unicellular, there are some colonial and multicellular species. Single cell protists can be very complex. All biological functions are carried out by organelles in each individual cell. Protists, the most Nutritionally diverse of all eukaryotes include phototrophs, which in, which contain uh, chloroplasts, heterotrophs, which absorb organic molecules or ingest larger food particles, and mixotrophs, which combine photosynthesis and heterotrophic nutrition. Some protists reduce, redu uh, reproduce asexually, while others reproduce sexually. Uh, or by sexual proce process of meiosis and fertilization. In this picture, you can see uh, the diversity of protists. These are only a few examples. So they can be in uh, different shapes with diff uh, 
with different functions all different groups of protists these are all single cells another single cell another one let me try if I can run the video I think I can't there is a problem with the video slides uh, endosymbiosis this is the <clears throat> next thing we are going to learn today I think I told you about the endosymbiotic theory when I was uh, when we were lear learning about the cell in the first semester there is now considerable evidence that much protest protests di protest diversity has its origins in endosymbiosis endosymbiosis is a relationship between two species in which one organism lives inside the other cell or cells of the other organism in this case the other organism is called host mitochondria and plastids are derived from prokaryotes that were engulfed by an ancestor of early eukaryotic cells mitochondria evolved once by endosymbiosis of an alpha proteobacterium plastids evolved later by endosymbiosis of a, of a photosynthetic cyanobacterium <coughs> the ancestral host cell may have been a locate or a new discovered group of archaea some species parasitize animals plants and other protists for example kinetoplastis kinetoplastids and the genus uh, trypanosoma cause sleeping sickness in humans another pathogenic uh, trypanosoma causes chagas disease uh, this is the micrograph of the protist called trypanosoma and these are the red blood cells of human trypanosomes evade host immune response by producing cell surface proteins with different molecular structures in each generation these frequent changes prevent the host from developing immunity brown algae is another group of uh, protists brown algae are largest and most complex algae they are all multicellular and most are marine brown algae include many species commonly called seaweeds and these are the largest protists called brown algae photosynthetic pro photosynthetic pro uh, protists uh, many protists are important producers that obtain energy from sun and convert carbon dioxide to organic compounds in aquatic communities photosynthetic protists and prokaryotes are the main producers photosynthetic protists are limited by nutrients populations can be explored when limiting nutrients are added <coughs> all right uh, this is what I chose for uh, protists uh, is there any questions about protista kingdom protista all right then we can go ahead to our next subject so as you can see I got it very short because you are molecular molecular biology students so next subject is plants let me check my YouTube connection again YouTube looks fine and we can go ahead
All right. The next subject today is plants. First, we split the plants in two groups, two main groups, non-vascular plants and uh, seed uh, and vascular plants. And then we split the vascular plants to seeded and seedless vascular plants. For much of Earth's history, the terrestrial surface was lifeless. Cyanobacteria and protists likely existed on land by 1.2 billion years ago. Small plants, fungi and animals emerged on land only within the last 500 million years. Since colonizing land, plants have diversified into more than 290,000 living species. Most present-day plants live on land through a few species return to aquatic habits. Algae are not included in the plant kingdom because <clears throat> they are photosynthetic protists. Plants supply oxygen plants are, and plants are the ultimate source of most food eaten by uh, land animals. So there is a uh, diversity, huge diversity through plants again. Uh, examples of plants. Plants evolved from green algae. Green algae, called uh, carophytes, are the closest relatives of plants. Many key traits of plants also appear in some algae. However, plants share following traits only with carophytes. Rings of cellulose, cellulose synthesizing proteins, structure of flagellate sperm, and formation of phragom, uh, phragmoplast. The move to land provided benefits, that is unfiltered sunlight, more plentiful carbon dioxide, and nutrient-rich soil. Land also presented challenges, scarcity of water and lack of structure support against gravity. Plants diversified as adaptations evolved that and it enabled them to thrive on land despite challenges. Drive traits of uh, plants are five, uh, there are five uh, key traits appeared in nearly all plants but they are absent on carophytes. Alternation of generations, multicellular dependent embryos, uh, volt spores produced by sporangia, multicellular gametang gametangia, and apical meristems. What does it mean? Alterna alternation of generation means plant alternate between two multicellular generation, a reproductive cycle called alternation of generations. The gametophyte generation is haploid and produces haploid gametes by mitosis. Fusion of a sperm and egg gives rise to diploid sporophyte, which, is pro which produces haploid spores by meiosis. Spores develop into gametophytes and this completes the life cycle of the plants, this kind of plants. Now, let's look at this. Uh, let's start from here. This is a sporophyt, which means plant producing spore. Uh, it produces spores with meiosis. And when these spores develop into the adult plants, that is called gametophytes. These gametophytes <coughs> have n chromosome and they produce gametes by mitosis these gametes combine by fertilization and it produces zygote with two n chromosomes and when this zygote develops it becomes another two n chromosome sporophyte apical meristems what does it mean plants sustain continual ground in length by repeated cell divisions within the apical meristems, apical meristem. Cells from the apical, mer apical meristems differentiate into various tissues. Apical meristem means the uh, tissue at the end of 
plant organs. It can be root or leaf. And these cells divide and uh, pro uh, products of these cell divisions become new types of cells. Additional di uh, derived traits include the cuticle, the waxy covering of the epidermis, stomata, specialized cells that allow for uh, gas exchange between the outside air and the plant, and micro uh, mycorrhizae, which is symbiotic associations between fungi and plants. They may have helped plants without true roots obtain nutrients. Let's look at <coughs> the plant organs now, starting from the roots. Roots are the organs that anchor vascular plants. They enable vascular plants to absorb water and nutrients from the soil. Roots may have evolved from uh, subterranean stems. Leaves are the next organs, next plant organs we are going to see. Leaves are the organs that increase the surface area of vascular plants, thereby capturing more solar energy that is used for photosynthesis. Leaves are categorized by two types, microfills, which are small, often spine-shaped leaves with a single vein, and megafills, which are larger leaves with a highly branched vascular system. All right, microfills and megafills. You can see the examples in this picture. All right, this is all I will tell about. Uh, actually, the first this was the first part of plants. Now I'm going to I'm going to go to the second part of the plants. Uh, Click, click. Next, see the plants. So let's look at uh, seeded plants now, or should we? Is there another? Let me check. Hold on a second, please. Yes, plant one, plant two, seeded plants. We are going to we are going to go on with uh, seeded plants, transforming the world. How did seeded plants transform the world? Let's look at that. Seeds change the uh, course of plant evolution enabling their bears to become dominant producers in most terrestrial ecosystems. Seeded plants originate about uh, 360 million years ago. A seed consists of an embryo and nutrients surrounded by protective coat. So if I ask you what seed means, you have to describe seed. How will you describe? A seed is a plant structure which carries embryo and nutrients surrounded by protective coats. So in the structure of a seed, there is an embryo with nutrients and these two structures are covered or surrounded by a coat which protects them. Seeds can disperse over long distances by wind or other means. In this picture, you can see the seeds, examples of seeds. Seeds and pollen grains are key adaptations for life on the earth. <coughs> In addition to seeds, uh, sorry, for life on the land, because when I say earth, uh, we can, we have to include the, uh, mari uh, the marine environments as well. In addition to seeds, following are common to all seeded plants. Reduced gametophytes, Heterospory, ovules, pollen. So these four uh, common structures are seen in seeded plants, except for seeds. Pollens and 
production of sperm. A microspore develops into a pollen grain that contains of a male gametophyte enclosed with the pollen wall. Pollination is the transfer of pollen to the part of a seeded plant containing the ovules. A germinated pollen grain produces a pollen tube that discharges sperm into the female gametophyte within the ovule. Pollen eliminates the need for film of water and uh, it can be dispersed great distances by air or, or animals. So what is the uh, what are the what are the advantages of seeds? Evolutionary advantages. If a sperm fertilizes uh, the egg of a seeded plant, the ovule will develop into seed. A seed is a sporophyte embryo along with its food supply packaged in a protective coat. So this is the second uh, description of seeds. So I gave you two descriptions for seeds. I hope you can understand what that means. Seeds provide some evolutionary advantages over spores. Seeds may remain dormant for days to years until conditions are favorable for germination. Seeds have a supply for stored food, supply of sport, uh, stored food, and seeds may be transplanted long distances, uh, sorry, transported for long distances by wind or animals. Now, we will split the seeded plants into two groups, gymnosperms and angiosperms. First, we will look at gymnosperms. Gymnosperms bear naked seeds, typically on cones. Cone means in Turkish, kozalak, kozalaklı bitkiler. Gymnosperm means naked seed. The seeds are exposed to sporophylls that form cones. Angiosperms angiosperm seeds, the second group. So the first group of seeded plants were gymnosperms and the second group was angiosperms. Angiosperm seeds are found in fruits <coughs> which are mature ovaries. So in gymnosperms there are no fruits, instead of that there are cones. But in angiosperms the seeds are found in the fruits. Fruits are the mature ovaries. Most gymnosperms are cone-bearing plants called conifers. Let's look at the evolution of seeded plants now, early seeded plants and the rise of gymnosperms. Origins of characteristics found in the living seeded plants date back to late Devonian period, which means 380 million years ago. For example, Archaeopteris Archaeopteryx was, Archaeopteryx was a heterosporous tree with a woody stem, but it did not bear seeds. A 360 million year old fossil from genus Elkinesia pro, uh, provides the earliest evidence of seeded plants. Living seeded plants can be diver, uh, divided into two clades, I said before, gymnosperms and angiosperms. Gymnosperms appear early in the fossil record about 305 million years ago. Conditions become drier at the end of Carboniferous, favoring gymnosperms over the previously dominant seedless vascular plants. Gymnosperms dominated terrestrial ecosystems during Mesozoic era. Mesozoic era. Uh, 252 to 66 million years ago. Gymnosperms served as a food for herbivores, herbivores dinosaurs. Recent fossil discoveries show that the gymnosperms were pollinated by insects over 100 million years ago. Angiosperms began to replace gymnosperms near the end of Mesozoic, Mesozoic era. Then let's look at the angiosperms now a little bit. All angiosperms are classified in a single phylum, which is Antophyta. 
Angiosperms have two key adaptations, flowers and fruits. So these two adaptations separate angiosperms from gymnosperms. Main differences of angiosperms from gymnosperms, flowers and fruits. Flowers. The flower is an angiosperm structure specialized for sexual reproduction. Many species are pollinated by insects or animal or other animals, while some species are, are wind pollinated. So pollination is carried out by insects or other animals in some uh, plant species, uh, while some other plants uh, utilize the wind, use the advantage of wind for uh, pollination. A flower is specialized shoot with, uh, with up to four types of uh, modified leaves called floral organs, sepals, which enclose the flower, sepals, petals, which are the often bright colored uh, to attract pollination, pollinators, wind, uh, and wind pollinated flowers generally lack uh, bright colors, stamens, which are male reproductive organs, and carpels, which are the female reproductive organs. These are the parts of a flower. A stamen consists of a stalk called a flament with a sac called anther. Microspores, which are the producers of anthers, develop into pollen grains uh, containing the male gametophytes. A carpel contains, uh, sorry, a carpel is called, consists of an ovary at the base of style leading up to a sticky stigma where pollen is received. The ovary contains the female gametophytes within the ovule. Fertilized ovules develop into seeds and the term pistil can be used to refer a single carpel or two or more fused carpels. All right. In this picture, you can see what I was telling about. So, parts of a simple flower. Uh, sepals are the green leaf-like structures. Petals are these, so the colored leaves of the flower. Stamens are male organs and uh, pistil is the female organ or carpal is the uh, female organ. So let's look at the structure of uh, stamen, male organs. Male organ is consists of two parts, filament, this part, and anther. Anther produces the sperm and pollens. And uh, female organ is consists of three parts, ovary, style and stigma. Stigma is where the pollens enter into the female organ. <clears throat> Flowers are variable in shape, size, color and odor. For example, some flowers have radial symmetry while others have bilateral symmetry. In radial symmetry, an imaginary line through the central axis divides the flower into two equal parts. In bilateral symmetry, a flower can be divided into two equal parts by a single imaginary line. Fritz. A frit is formed when the ovary wall thickens and matures. Fruit protects the uh, fruits protect the seeds and aid in their dispersal. Mature fruits can be either fleshy or dry. Various fruit adaptations help disperse seeds. Seeds can be carried by wind, water, or animals to new locations. All right. In this picture, you can see different kinds of fruits, all which uh, most you know. Uh, please look at these uh, pictures from your book. I hope I can show this video. On, okay, I can't. Sorry. 
this video is not available either okay videos are not available uh, evolutionary links with animals sorry so uh, evolutionary links between the plants and animals animals influence the evolution of plants and vice versa vice versa means also evolution of animals affected plant evolution for example animal herbivores select for plant defenses for example, interactions between pollinators and flowering plants select the mutually beneficial adaptations. Angiosperm diversity. Angiosperms comprise more than 250,000 living species. Previously, angiosperms were divided into two main groups, monocotyledons or monocots and dicots. Uh, monocot means one cotyledon, dicot means two cotyledons. Diclate, a dicot, means two dicots, uh, includes most dicots. All right, let's look at the structure of monocots and dicots. Uh, this picture uh, shows the uh, monocot and dicot uh, characteristics. In the seeds, in monocots, there is only one cotyledon, but in uh, the others, two cotyledons are exist. Uh, structure of leaves, anatomy of leaves differ, and uh, vascularization differ, roots usually differ, uh, and structure of uh, pollens uh, differ as well. They both have flowers, but anatomy of flowers are different as well. All right. Monocots, about one quarter of angiosperms, about 70,000 species are monocotyledons, the largest groups of orchids, grasses, and palms. All right, examples of monocots, orchid, grass, and palm. Human welfare depends on seeded plants. Seeded plants are key sources of food, fuel, wood products, and medicine. Our reliance on seed plants makes preservation of plant diversity critical. So what are the products we get from the plants? Most of our food comes from angiosperms. Six crops, wheat, rice, maize, potato, cassava, and sweet potatoes yield 80% of calories consumed by humans. Modern crops are products of relatively recent genetic change uh, resulting from artificial selection. Flowering, uh, flowering plants provide other edible uh, products including tea, coffee, chocolate and spices. Many seeded plants provide wood. Uh, secondary compounds of seeded plants are used in medicine. For example, uh, the examples of uh, plant-derived medicines, the compound called atropine, the source of belladonna plant, atropa belladonna, and it's used for eye purple dilator. Digitalin, source is foxglove, it's used in heart medication. Menthol is produced from eucalyptus tree, and it's throat uh, sweetener. Quinine, kinkona uh, tree, is produced from kinkona tree and uh, used for malaria prevention. And more examples. All right, these are what I want to say about uh, seeded plants. Any questions about seeded plants? <laughs>